Ever since I got myself a garage half a year ago, there has been one problem. Even though it looks like electricity should be available, in reality it is not hooked up to the power grid and thus I am dependent on sunlight as the only light source. So in this video let's change this by reconstructing the wiring and adding a photovoltaic off-grid system to my garage so that I can see what I'm doing even when the sun went down. Let's get started. As with every electrical room wiring, we started off with a layout plan, in which we decided on a position for the LED strips, junction boxes, sockets, the light switch and so on. Afterwards, we marked an approximate position for the switch and the junction boxes onto the wall and measured the distances between all of them to come up with an estimated length of the different wire kinds and installation conduits. So we went on a trip to the nearest home improvement store to buy one switch, three sockets, pipe clips, one big junction box, four small junction boxes, M16 installation conduit and three kinds of wire. Why three kinds you may ask? Well, we use so called NIM wire to connect all these sockets in parallel and hook them up to the output of an inverter that on its input side directly connects to the load outputs of the solar charge controller. We used the Fener Justi wire to create a serious connection consisting of the light switch and an additional read switch in order to trigger a relay when the switch is turned on and the garage door is opened, because a read switch with a magnet is mounted to it and a read switch closes its contact when a magnet comes near it. When triggered, the relay then connects the 12V power from the load output to the LED strips which we all connected in parallel by utilizing the last wire kind, common 4mm speaker cable. And while we are at the subject of the wiring diagram, the 100W solar panel connected directly to the PV input of the blue solar charge controller, while the big and rather heavy lead acid battery with a voltage of 12V, a capacity of 100 amp hours and deep cycle capability connected to the battery input of the charge controller. And now with the diagram out of the way, it was time to remove the old switch, lights, junction boxes, wires, wire clips, sockets and so on. Basically everything old. Then we mounted the switch, sockets and a junction box to the right wall of the garage with screws secured pipe clips with a distance of 10 cm from each electrical component and added more clips in between those components with a maximum distance of 60 cm to one another. Afterwards, we measured the length between the first and last clip for one pipe length, added 8 cm, marked this length onto a pipe, used a handsaw to cut it to size and clicked it into place. And just in case you need a greater length than 3 meters, which is the normal length of such a pipe, you can always easily connect two of them together. And if you ask yourself why we use two installation conduits parallel to each other instead of just one, then you should know that AC and DC cables should always be laid separated, not only through the pipes, but also when it comes to the wiring inside the junction boxes. But getting back to topic. After finishing the installation on the right wall of the garage, we added the junction box for the LEDs at the back of the garage and mounted most of the installation conduits there as well. Next, we drilled the holes for the LED strip clips and secured them in place with screws. But before attaching the LEDs though, we marked a point in the center of the first LED clips row and drilled a hole there all the way through up to the roof of the garage. After enlarging the hole from the other side, I hammered a pipe through it and opened a part of bitumen, which I applied all around the pipe to seal off the newly created hole. To mount the solar panel, we created a fitting square shape of the panel out of the bitumen, directed the extension solar wires through the pipe, hooked them up to the panel through MC4 connectors and pressed the panel into the bitumen square. To further protect the initially created hole from water though, we added an additional layer of bitumen all around the edges of the solar panel. 
Inside the garage, we then shortened the pipe and continued by creating fitting lengths of the warm white and cold white 5630 LED strip. To mount it to the ceiling, I utilized a piece of wire insulation between the LED strip and clip to apply enough pressure to the LED strip so that it stays in place. But I only used this additional piece of insulation for the first and last clip, not for the other clips in between them. Then I soldered thinner 1.5 square millimeter wire pieces to the 4 square millimeter wire in order to easily hook them up to the beginning of each LED strip without ripping off the cover pads of these strips. Next, we mounted the remaining DC and AC junction box as well as the solar charge controller to the back of the garage and utilized instant glue to attach the reed switch to the garage door mounting and the fitting magnet to the garage door. And by hooking up two wires of the USD cable to the reed switch and directing the cable into the junction box, we started off with the actual wiring. That means we pushed all the required cables through the pipes and partly into the junction boxes, cut them to size and wired up the switch and both sockets. Afterwards, we connected all the LEDs in parallel with Wago terminals, added a mounting for the inverter to the wall, which was then attached with zip ties, and continued by adding the load wires to the charge controller, which we then connected to the inverter and the relay circuits inside the DC junction box. And of course, it is always a good idea to solder the relay along with PCB terminals to a piece of perfboard beforehand, to make the wiring easier later on. Now to perform the first test of the system, we connected 4 square millimeter wires to the battery terminals of the charge controller, which directly connects to the battery terminals, and attached the wires of the solar panel to the PV terminals. And by flicking the light switch, the LEDs turned on without a problem. And by adding a Bluetooth module to the charge controller, we can even use an app to see whether the battery gets charged through the solar panel or discharged through the LEDs. And after finishing the AC wiring and closing all the junction boxes, this solar off-grid system was complete and works like a charm. I hope you liked this project and learned a thing or two about electrical wiring. As always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Stay creative and I will see you next time.